Hello, everyone. My name is Xiu Zheng Guo. I just got my PhD from Tsinghua University, and I am now a postdoc. I'm going to share with you our recent work, Science, Design, and Implementation of a Low-Power Demodulator for LoRa Backscatter Systems. This is a joint work among Tsinghua University, University of Pittsburgh, and Yanshan University. In recent years, backscatter communication has emerged as an ultra-low-power alternative to active radios. It provides ubiquitous wireless connectivity for lots of IoT applications. For example, a farmer could remotely monitor the sensor data in the field. From the conventional RFID technology to the latest lower backscatter radios, the communication range of the backscatter systems has been improved to several hundred meters. Existing LoRa backscatter tag takes the LoRa signals sent from the access point as the carrier signals and modulates its data on the top of the carrier signals. Due to the fact that the LoRa signals can be decoded at very low signal-to-noise ratio, LoRa backscatter systems allow the tag to communicate over the distance of hundreds of meters. However, existing LoRa backscatter systems present a new challenge on packet delivery. We conduct experiments on campus to analyze this problem. The distance between the transmitter and the receiver is 100 meters. When the tag is placed 10 centimeters, the bit error rate is far less than 1%. As the tag is moved away from the transmitter, the bit error rate rises rapidly. We find that the receiver is almost unable to demodulate any backscatter signal once the tag is placed 20 meters away from the transmitter. Considering that the tag are unaware of the packet loss, each packet must be transmitted blindly for multiple times. The blind retransmission will waste precious energy and cause interference to other radios that work on the same frequency band. To address these issues, we expect a downlink from the access point to the backscatter tag. Through the feedback signals, the retransmission requests can be transmitted to the tag on demand. Therefore, we focus on the advancement of downlink from the access point to the tag. The tag can not only reflect the carrier signals, but also demodulate the carrier signals. For example, the backscatter tag demodulates feedback signals from an access point and makes a retransmission only if it is asked to do so. Second, the backscatter tag can allocate commands and schedule channels. The access point monitors the wireless spectrum and notifies the backscatter tag to switch channels in the presence of interference. Third, the backscatter tag can adapt data rate to the link condition. The access point assess the condition of backscatter link. Each tag adapts its data rate based on the feedback message to utilize the wireless link better. Prior works for downlink demodulation can be broadly divided into three groups. The first group leverages the envelope detector to demodulate the downlink signal, such as RFID systems. But this method can only demodulate amplitude modulated signal. The second group leverages a multiple antenna cancellation circuit to enable the signal demodulation on backscatter tags. But this method is power intensive and complex. The third group offloads power intensive function to external device such as a low power BRE receiver. However, the working range is limited to tens of centimeters. Our work differs from these systems in two aspects. First, our work is designed for demodulating frequency modulated signal as opposed to amplitude modulated signal. Second, our work is designed for long range lower backscatter systems. Bringing demodulation ability to lower backscatter tag is challenging, primarily due to the tag's stringent power budget. To demodulate a lower symbol, the commercial lower receiver operates by down conversion, ADC sampling, and FFT decoding. These operations are power intensive. They consume over 14 milliwatts power altogether. Considering a backscatter tag, it can only harvest less than 1 milliwatts power every 10 seconds. Therefore, the standard LoRa demodulation method is ill-suited for the backscatter tag. So we ask a fundamental question. Can we enable a low-power demodulator for long-range LoRa backscatter systems? 
Here, we give an affirmative answer with cyan, which is the first of its kind low power lower demodulator. First, we simplify the standard lower demodulation from energy perspective, and its power consumption is only about 370 milliwatts. Second, we improve the demodulation sensitivity, and the demodulation range can be up to 180 meters. Cyan is based on the following key observation. First, a Lorentz symbol is represented by a chirp whose frequency grows linearly over time. Applying a differential operation to the Lorentz chirp, the amplitude of the transformed signal is proportional to the frequency of the input Lorentz chirp. In other words, the frequency modulated chirp signal can be transformed into the amplitude modulated signal using a differential circuit. For two lower symbols, they differ from each other in the initial frequency. So these two chirps will reach the maximum frequency at different times. After the differential operation, the amplitude of the transformed signal will reach the peak value at different times. Therefore, this frequency amplitude correlation inspires us to demodulate the frequency modulated lower signals by checking its peak amplitude on its transformed counterpart. To put this high-level idea into practice, an intuitive solution to realize the differential operation is using RLC resonance circuit. Usually, the narrow bandwidth nature of LoRa requires the capacitor should be as small as 5 times 10 to the power of minus 14 picofarad. But existing commercial capacitors are larger than this upper bound. Therefore, building such a narrow bandwidth RLC resonance is impractical. In Cyan, we instead adopt a surface acoustic wave filter. The soft filter is a purely passive component with zero power consumption. We leverage the sharp amplitude frequency response of the soft filter to achieve signal transformation. For example, when a LoRa chirp is sent to the soft filter, the input transducer transforms the electrical signal into the acoustic waves. The internal material has a frequency selective characteristics, as shown in this amplitude frequency response of the soft filter. We observe a 25 decibel amplitude gap as the frequency grows from 433.5 MHz to 434 MHz. Apparently, such amplitude gap is enough to differentiate the frequency variation within lower bandwidth. Finally, the output transducer transforms the acoustic wave back into the electrical signals. We can find that the frequency modulated lower chirp can be transformed to the amplitude modulated lower chirp. A lower packet first contains the preamble using 10 identical up chirps, the synchronization word using down chirps, and the payload follows. When this lower packet is sent to the cell filter, the output of the soft filter is frequency and amplitude modulated signals. The amplitude of the transformed signal scales with the frequency of the input chirp. Then the transformed signal can be then converted to the baseband through an envelope detector. The following question is how to digitize these baseband signals and check the peak values. A standard method is using an ADC, but the ADC is power intensive. To save power, we replace the ADC with a low-power voltage comparator and a counter. First, we set a voltage threshold, and the comparator output high voltage only when the signal's amplitude is higher than the threshold. Second, the low-power counter is used to sample these logical values. Finally, Cyan decode each chirp by localizing the high voltage. Therefore, Vanilla cyan can demodulate lower signals with a minimal power consumption. However, the demodulation sensitivity of vanilla is limited due to the signal attenuation in the soft filter and the noise added by the envelope detector. So next, we introduce the super cyan to improve the sensitivity. In order to improve the demodulation sensitivity, we first understand the principle of envelope detector Due to the inherent nonlinearity caused by the squaring operation, 
both the targeted signal and the RF noise will be downconverted to the baseband. Consequently, the targeted signal becomes weaker after downconversion. That's resulting in the jump of signal to noise ratio. To improve the demodulation sensitivity, we design a low power cyclic frequency shifting method to remove the noise and amplify the desired signal. First, the input signal is mixed with the clock signal, resulting in two sideband signals. Second, the envelope detector extracts the envelope of these three signals and then converts them to the baseband. Third, the amplifier boosts the power of the desired signal and then attenuates the power at other frequency bands. First, the desired signal is shifted back to the baseband. And finally, the desired signal is filtered by a low-pass filter. Evidently, our measurement study shows that this cyclic frequency shifting brings 11 decibel gain to the signal-to-noise ratio. Now, we present the high-level circuit schematic. The circuit of vanilla cyan demodulates large signals with the minimal power consumption. The super cyan improves the demodulation sensitivity by integrating the cyclic frequency shifting circuit into the envelope detector. Next, we introduce the implementation and evaluation of cyan. We implement cyan on a two-layer PCB board. As a low-power demodulation peripheral, cyan can be integrated into the existing long-range lower backscatter systems. We conduct field studies both indoors and outdoors to evaluate the performance of cyan. First, the demodulation range grows with the increasing spreading factor and bandwidth of the lower signals. This is expected since a higher spreading factor improves the anti-noise ability of lower signals, such that the demodulation range grows. Second, the maximum demodulation range can be up to 180 meters. In terms of the throughput, we find that the throughput declines with the spreading factor but grows with bandwidth. The maximum throughput can be up to 18 kbps. We also carefully compute the power consumption and the cost of each component in science. As you can see, the soft filter and envelope detector are passive. The overall power consumption is about 370 microwatts. The power and the cost can be reduced sharply after ASIC fabrication. We have presented the design, implementation, and evaluation of Cyan. There is something to take away from Cyan. Conventional thinking usually treats the backscatter tag as a transmission-only device. So most of backscatter innovations try hard to push the uplink from the tag to the receiver. For example, improving the throughput, extending the backscatter range, or scaling to different medias. In Cyan, we focus on the advancement of downlink from the transmitter to the tag a fundamental but missing piece. However, bringing the modulation ability to lower band scatter tag is challenging due to the tag's stringent power budget. So in science, we replace active components with their passive counterparts to reduce the power consumption. For example, we leverage the passive saw filter to achieve signal transformation. Moreover, reducing the inherent nonlinear distortion of the analog device is a key step to improve the signal to noise ratio. So we introduce a cyclic frequency shifting circuit to extend the communication range. Then we briefly conclude our work. We designed the first of its kind of low power LoRa demodulator and conduct extensive experiments to evaluate the performance of science. Finally, thank you for my collaborators. Thank you for watching and listening. Code and hardware schematics can be found on the GitHub. Please visit our website for details.